I'm Steve Mokler and I'm a songwriter and birdhouse builder. You don't have to say a word to speak to me. Hi, I'm Nigel Finley and I'm uh, joined today by singer-songwriter Steve Mokler. Thank you, Steve, for joining us today to uh, talk about you and your music. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I know you grew up in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and uh, you moved down in Nashville. Um, Tell me sort of how that's shaped your songwriting. Um, well, I guess I, when I graduated high school, I knew I wanted to do music for a living, and um, kind of going to college for a music school was kind of the compromise between me and my parents. <laughs> so I went to Belmont University, and um, it was an awesome kind of gateway into the city. Uh, I was there for two years, and, and then I started to do music full time. But uh, Nashville really challenged me to understand what a great song is because it's the songwriting capital of the world. So I think I went there thinking I'm going to bring my own thing to the city, but it definitely uh, brought its own thing upon me uh, and just, you know, when you can get there you can you can choose to be discouraged or inspired by the talent around you and I chose to be inspired by it and I still am. To keep my faith, I think we're both better off with a little start playing music and why why music as opposed to something other than that. Uh, I, I guess I started playing guitar when I was uh, 14 um, but when I was younger than that I always I always uh, fantasized about music before I was brave enough to say I wanted to do it you know when I was driving with my mom somewhere and I can remember being in the back seat hearing like Matchbox 20 on the radio, <laughs> and in my mind, I was Rob Thomas. Like, uh, okay. I was always this one singing. And then, I guess uh, when I got to be about 14, I realized that, you know, I'm gonna do this. So I, I got a, my grandma's boyfriend at the time lent me a guitar that he wasn't using, and I just started writing songs and quickly it fell past me. Fourth, fourth album. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, you know I was listening to that, been listening to it, and it seems like there's really something for everyone on the album. Um, the track "Waiting" is sort of like rip pop yeah. influences. Yeah. Uh, today is a little bit more rootsy with banjo and piano. Yeah. Um, and then uh, "Play You Down" is more of a catchy, twangy song that could easily cross over into the country genres. Yeah. Um, what What was your inspiration behind the album? I took two years to write the record, and I wrote over 90 songs for it. Which any any other every record I've done previous to that, I was like, these are the songs I have. Let's record them. And uh, so, like I said, I think it was living in Nashville that really kind of made me, you know, hire the bar for mm -hmm. what a great song it was. So it was two years of life and <laughs> and figuring out, you know, I guess where I fit and uh, where I fit in as an artist. And, just in my, you know, my walk of faith and my walk of relationships, all those things kind of uh, gave birth to songs. And I think the reason there's such a, you know, there's such a spread of genre maybe is because it was, I wasn't focusing on a sound, mm -hmm. I was focusing on a song. And, and you know, sometimes I have an identity crisis a little bit of what, you know, what my sound is, <laughs> but I'm more of a, I more chase songs. Right? So whatever, you know, those kind of have a little bit of country, a little bit of rock influence. I choose the, the song wins, I guess, I'm over a cohesive sound. You're also quite an activist, uh, specifically with an organization you started called Free the Birds. Yeah. Um, Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about this organization and how we can get involved and how, how, yeah. how it started? Well, um, after after doing music for a couple years full time, which is all that's good for me, I realized that I think it's really important uh, to do something to serve to serve something bigger than yourself. Our our aim is is to raise funding for uh, this organization called Love One Forty Six that has a safe house in the Philippines. And they're rescuing girls from the sex trade, and they're they're bringing them into the safe home that they've built. And they have doctors, um, therapists, and nutritionists, and this, 
the biggest thing is just the community that we're creating for these girls to come in who've had a similar experience and be restored. And we just think that's beautiful. And so right now we're only working with them, but we hope to grow and help fund, you know, anyone who's fighting.